Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. The Minister for Home Affairs told the Bodily Correctional Facility. Government to consider incentives to nationals vaccinated against COVID-19. And St. Lucia mourns the passing of legendary cultural icon Arthur Jacobs. The island's Minister for Public Service, Home Affairs, Labour and Gender Affairs, Honourable Dr. Virginia Albert Poyat, on Friday, 17 September 2021, continued her familiarization tour of the various departments and agencies comprising her ministerial portfolio. Honorable Dr. Virginia Albert Poyat visited the Bodily Correctional Facility and assured management that her office will provide the requisite resources and support to the correctional facility to carry out its mandate. More from Homer DeMarc. Minister for Public Service, Home Affairs, Labor and Gender Affairs, Honorable Dr. Virginia Poyat visited the Bodily Correctional Facility on Friday, 17 September 2021 to gain insight into the operations of the island's primary penal facility. During the comprehensive tour, the minister was guided through each section of the building and was provided with a detailed account of its administration. The Minister for Public Service, Home Affairs, Liba and Gender Affairs also held discussions with the director of the institution, Hilary Herman, on some of the critical issues impeding the BCF. Honorable Dr. Albert Poyot indicated that among the problems to be addressed is decreasing the number of prisoners at the bodily correctional facility. What I'm very concerned about is the, to, to ensure that we minimize the number of persons who come to bodily. And that is a huge task, but we have to work extremely hard. And what is of even greater concern is the, the ratio of male to female that has always been a great imbalance. And we have to work very hard on our young people and our men so that they can control their emotions, they can resolve their conflict in a more amicable and peaceful manner and stay on the side of the law. And this is something we will want all our institutions in St. Lucia to begin to work at how can we reduce the number of persons that are admitted in at bodily. Director of the BCF, Hilary Herman, revealed some of the pertinent issues affecting the penal facility. As you know, our prison is almost 20 years old. The infrastructure is crumbling. We need locks, we need fences, we need gates. There are many issues. Um, so we've highlighted some of those uh, with the minister, but uh, we're realists to know that um, resources are limited and uh, in a country where we need schools, roads, rivers, bridges, um, we know where our priorities are. So um, we hope that uh, some of the requirements that we have will be attended to and we've passed on our priority list to the minister. Honorable Dr. Virginia Albert Poyot is expected to meet with the Cabinet of Ministers to devise a plan to remedy their problems at the institution and increase the success rate of the rehabilitation programs. From the Government Information Service, I'm Hermody Mark, reporting. The Government of St. Lucia is moving to save and secure lives against COVID-19. Minister for Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs, Honorable Moses Jabatiste, says government will intensify efforts for vaccine uptake. Vaccination is proving to be the most important pillar in the fight against COVID-19. St. Lucians are encouraged to get vaccinated amid growing new cases and COVID deaths. The Ministry of Health on Thursday, 16 September, reported seven new COVID-19 deaths and two COVID-19-related deaths. All of these deaths occurred during the period September 2, 2021 to September 14, 2021. To date, the total number of COVID-19 deaths in country is 106 and the total number of COVID-19 related deaths is 42. We will increase our vaccination sites. We will increase activities which will encourage parents to get their families vaccinated as we approach the possible face-to-face -face environment in our schools. It is imperative for us to increase vaccination among our school population who are ed eligible for the vaccine. We have enough vaccines in stock. We will encourage the approval of social activities for fully vaccinated individuals as long as the consultations and proper accounting systems are put in place. In fact, the Prime Minister has advised the 
the public servants concerned to begin the process of consultation so that we may begin as soon as practicable. Health Minister Honorable Moses Jabati says government will ramp up the education campaign on the COVID-19 vaccines to help the population understand the benefits and importance of vaccination. Government will also seek to provide incentives to vaccinated persons. As St. Lucia continues to battle the COVID-19 pandemic, arrangements have been made to meet the demand of oxygen at the respiratory hospital. More in this report from Fernel Neptune. The Ministry of Health recently received an ISO tank of liquid oxygen from Martinique to assist with the surging in demand for oxygen at the respiratory hospital. The oxygen procured will be used to treat COVID-19 patients at the respiratory hospital. Medical Director at the Respiratory Hospital, Dr. Alicia Eugene Ford, says she is elated about the boost in oxygen supply given the greater demand for oxygen at the hospital. Oxygen therapy is a very important arm when it comes to treating COVID-19. And over the last few weeks, we have noticed an increase in the number of patients that are coming that are very ill, requiring more and more oxygen. It is a very expensive process to allow us to get it. Martinique has the cases as well to deal with. We actually had a boat from Dominica who came across to drop this tank for us and they too have to deal with the cases. So we're asking us St. Lucians, do what we need to do. Mask up, hand hygiene, isolate, um, vaccinate. If you have to vaccinate, you need to vaccinate, vaccinate. General Manager of Winwood Island Gases Limited, Lucas Lubin says, the fourth wave of COVID-19 has put a strain on their supply of oxygen and therefore must explore options to provide oxygen to the hospital. Normally, the hospitals, in particular Victoria Hospital, would have done um, say about 240 cylinders of our oxygen in almost two weeks. And right now, the demand is so high that we end up doing about 240 cylinders per day. And right now, as of two days ago, it has ramped up to 300 cylinders per day. It has put us a sort of a strain on our productive um, capacity. And because we do have a plant, and as well as we do import oxygen to compensate for any differences. And as a result of that um, significant demand, and, and so that we had to maintain that, uh, maintain supply in the hospitals, we ensured that we had a, a, uh, more tanks to be able to supply the hospitals, in particular, um, Victoria Hospital. The purchasing of the ISO tank of liquid oxygen was made possible through the efforts of the government of St. Lucia, Winwood Island Gases Limited, and the government of Martinique. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Elderly Affairs, I am Penal Neptune. St. Lucia mourns the passing of legendary and honored 2020 cultural icon Arthur Jacobs, affectionately known as Jakes. As a young man, his love for the creative arts was evident. Arthur became a self-taught artisan and sculptor. Under the influence of Roderick Roddy Walcott, he developed his love for music and theater. The highlight of his acting career was his role as Tuset Louverto in Sir Derek Walcott's celebrated world premiere of Haitian Earth, a production commissioned by the government of St. Lucia to commemorate the 150th year after the emancipation of slaves, which was also short for film. Mr. Jacobs toured with Sir Derek Walcott performing in festival seasons in Trinidad, Guadeloupe and Italy. In 2020, the Cultural Development Foundation honored him as St. Lucia's 2020 icon at its annual Cultural Icon series, as an excerpt from that production. He was always a lead actor. That was his strength. He had a fantastic memory. And to be a good actor, you have to have a good memory so that you can explain it, express it in a very convincing form. Ah, good morning, youngster. It's a damp, mournful walk through the forest, isn't it? And only the cheap of a bird to warm one. Makes the old bones creak. Bonjour, Vico. My name is Tijan. What I can never forget about Jigs on stage, there were two little children 
who was supposed to be the offspring of the princess. And the princess is murdered in the play, the play which is played, a part played by Zin, Zin Thibbles, who was another famous arts guild actress. And when Jake thundered out in one of his lines, the children started to cry. They were supposed to be dead. <laughs> they were frightened out of, from death. <laughs> he won an award, best, I think, best supporting actor for that way. And that was my first experience with Arthur Jacobs. Arthur Jacobs had a love affair with stone and wood. He was a self-taught craftsman and sculptor, using salmon and mahogany found naturally in St. Lucia, creating unique North American pieces. Some of his commissioned work can be found in government of St. Lucia offices, royal palaces, foreign diplomatic offices, and places of high esteem. As a sculptor, he created bronze busts for famous St. Lucians like Garnet Gordon, Louis McVeigh, and Dr. Carl Le Corbinier. He studied sculpting, right? He had gotten a, a scholarship, a fellowship to um, go to the United States. I think, I think this would have been way back in the, oh boy, maybe early 70s, I'm not even sure. No, earlier than that, no, I mean earlier than that. Um, I think, I think I'm, I'm not sure. To, to study, um, so he did sculpting. Um, but I mean, you couldn't really make a living as a sculptor here. And so, you know, you, you went into like, you know, making gravestones and plaques and that kind of thing. Um, and also the, the, the clocks, you know, the, you know, the shape of St. Lucia and that kind of thing. And, that, and that's, that's, what, that's what he put, his, um, that's what he put his, his skills, the use that he put his skills to. But I've wondered on more than one occasion what his sculpture would have been like, what, you know, would have been like. And if he had, if he had really had the, the freedom to, to do it, you know, what, what that would have been like. Um, really phenomenal man, you know. As often the case with creatives, Arthur Jacobs' talent bled into music and theater. He joined the St. Lucia Arts Guild in 1959 at the age of 22, under the tutelage of Guild founders Roderick and Derek Walcott. Jakes blossomed as an actor. In 2018, Mr. Jacobs was awarded the St. Lucia Medal of Merit Gold for his indelible contribution to the arts. The full icon series featuring the life and work of Arthur Jacob can be seen on NTN. St. Lucia joins the global commemoration of the International Day for the Preservation of the Ozone Layer on Thursday, 16 September 2021. This year marks the 34th anniversary of the 1987 signing of the Montreal Protocol on Substances that Deplete the Ozone Layer. Ratified by all 198 countries of the world, the Montreal Protocol is touted as one of the most successful environmental agreements to date, as the ozone layer now shows signs of recovery, thanks to the phasing out of the ozone-depleting substances globally. Such chemicals are more commonly used as refrigerants in everyday appliances, such as refrigerators and air conditioners. Some are used in fire extinguishers, mobile air conditioning units, and as agricultural fumigants against pests. Hydrochlorofluorocarbons, HCFCs, are the main ODS used today. However, under the Montreal Protocol, countries have committed to eliminating their use by 2030. Minister for Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology and Vocational Training, Honorable Sean Edward, during his address highlighted that St. Lucia has made significant strides in that regard, having eliminated the first group of chemicals called chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, in 2008. In our endeavors to meet the obligations of the Montreal Protocol, St. Lucia has developed regulations to phase out and manage ozone depleting substances. Measures were put in place to monitor and control the import and export of these substances, including the institution of import quotas and a licensing system. To prevent illegal trade, we have trained customs and other enforcement officers in the identification and classification of refrigerants and related equipment and the enforcement of the licensing quota system. I urge all importers and retailers of refrigerants and related equipment to comply with these regulations. 
This year's theme, Montreal Protocol, keeping us our food and vaccines cool, highlights the agreement's invaluable contribution to a sustainable cold chain that ensures the integrity and safety of pharmaceuticals, food and other chilled goods essential to lives and livelihoods. In October of 2016, the Montreal Protocol's Kigali Amendment was adopted, lining up another group of refrigerants called hydrofluorocarbons, HFCs, for phase out. Considering its zero impact on the depletion of the ozone layer, HCFs have been relied on as a replacement for hydrochlorofluorocarbons, HCFCs, and chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs. However, it is also a harmful greenhouse gas. The goal of the Kigali Amendment is to achieve an 80% reduction in HFC consumption by 2047. The minister explained that individuals in the field have also undergone extensive training to develop good practices to meet the specified goals. In partnership with the United Nations Industrial Development Organization and the United Nations Environment Program, we have provided training for refrigeration and air conditioning technicians in good refrigeration and air conditioning management practices, as well as in the safe use of alternative refrigerants. We have also equipped the two main refrigeration training centers, one at the Safa Louis Community College and the other at the Center for Adolescent Renewal and Education Care, with the proper tools to provide the much needed training on flammable refrigerant alternatives to ozone depleting substances. The cold chain referenced in this year's theme refers to the various stages that a refrigerated product passes through, either until it is removed by a customer in the retail environment or unloaded from a delivery vehicle a few meters away from its destination. For consumers, the cold chain is often associated with transport, retail, and household refrigerators. However, refrigeration is also widely used in the agri-food industry for the storage of raw materials and final products, as well as for food processing. Officer in the National Ozone Unit within the Department of Sustainable Development, Ashana Scott, explained. We have been promoting more, not only ozone, but climate-friendly options or alternatives when it comes to cooling and not only that we have started training our local refrigeration technicians to use these alternatives safely also we are working to finalize st lucia's national cooling strategy which would uh, introduce minimum performance standards and what that means in in general is that we want to ensure that the equipment that comes in is not only efficient but it will not waste energy and that it will not put a dent in our pocket at the end of the day. Also vital for the safe supply of vaccines, medicines and healthcare applications, public awareness of the cold chain has increased under current global pandemic conditions, primarily for its delivery of life-saving COVID-19 vaccines to countries around the world. The commitments under the Kigali Amendment can help parties work together to use new sustainable cold chain systems that are highly efficient, safe and use climate-friendly refrigerants. From the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norvell. This is NTN Nightly. Primus Hutchinson is up next. Stay with us. Suicidal thoughts, like other mental health challenges, can affect anyone. It can be you, your colleague, family member, or neighbor. Everyone has a role to play in preventing suicide. Know the warning signs. If you or someone you know is in crisis or emotional distress, call the suicide hotline at 203. Remember, help is available. This is a message from the Employee Assistance Program, Department of the Public Service. Contact us at 468-2269 or 468-2260. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur Ta, Janel, Monsieur Madame Department, qui n'est responsabilité pour information à gouvernement de la CGIS, à ce moment télévision nationale, NTN, Caposato Nouvelle Aquayol, Caposato Primus.
Premier ministre de ici, on a Philippe Jepier, déclaré qu'il est toujours pas oui pour recevoir conseil, rond de Grec, en commune médicale PIA, en si meilleure façon, adresser maladie corona. Mais il aussi fait comprendre qu'il est peu considéré pour fermer l'opération PIA aussi. Premier ministre Pierre dit qu'il a pris une décision de ça depuis que l'opération médicale a dit pour faire ça. Premier ministre Pierre a participé à une discussion à la télévision. Mais le Premier ministre Pierre a fait public la savoir aussi. Les une décision qu'on a fait pour fermer le pays, préparation ni pour faire aussi, pour une grande quantité de monde qui a fait course et s'est acheté la brisée en supermarché, et ça a été l'occasion de l'autre façon. Parce qu'il y a un latelier qui a comblé et qui a placé plus de monde en risque pour trouver maladie. Mais le Premier ministre Pierre dit qu'il a écouté le conseil de ces Grecs dans ces pays-là et qu'il est nécessaire pour faire une opération pays, notamment, ça a été fait. Le ministre a plaidé et le public pour suivre ce protocole-là. Et comme c'est en quatre mois depuis le gouvernement en pouvoir, il peut prendre un timide plus de temps. Le public a suivi tout ce qui est là. Mais il dit qu'il n'y a pas de la réunion de réduction. Le premier ministre Pierre a remarqué qu'il n'a jamais dit que c'est le médical pays à ce moment-là. On doit travailler avec le premier ministre pour connaître tout le bagage. Et qu'il n'y a plus de mieux écouter le peuple national en ayant un qui connaît plus de lui dans cette situation. Le premier ministre Pierre a déclaré qu'il n'y a pas de docteur et qu'il a seulement suivi le conseil des Grecs et du personnel de santé. Il fait comprendre que tout ce protocole-là a fait que les professionnels et le gouvernement a suivi les formations hautes de commande. Le premier ministre a remarqué que si la police pays a ni tout pouvoir pour produire le travail, le gouvernement a mis la main au service. On a Pierre, le premier ministre dit aussi que ces policiers-là pouvoir pour bailler n'importe qui qui désobéit à ce protocole-là. Même pour qu'il a fait, puis pour la Grenade, c'est une quête, et plusieurs autres pays en région. Il dit que ça est encore nécessaire parce que, malheureusement, il y a à peu près 150 ou 200 policiers à Corinne, par exemple. Alors, l'effort, c'est pour protéger la police et la famille. Le premier ministre dit que l'action, c'est pour protection de la santé, c'est pour qu'il y a contre maladie. Il y a eu café, tac, et puis même. Le premier ministre dit que c'est loi contre le corona qui est toujours là, qui est toujours là. Et ça, il y a fait, pour le gouvernement, ça, il y a fait, c'est en déplacé, tu mets de prix à ce sac. En parlant de ça, le Premier ministre, c'est aussi Honorable Philippe Depier, qui a quitté le pays à samedi le 18 septembre 2021, assisté à une conférence chef du gouvernement contre le pays caribé avec l'Amérique latine, en Mexique. Selon un rapport qui sortait à bureau, le Premier ministre, l'objectif de la là, c'est pour renforcer l'alliance régionale contre la maladie corona. L'alliance a été formée en mois de janvier 2020 et qui a posé attention sur des degrés de probabilité de santé, façon de récupérance économique et de coopération qui a placé ces pays caribes et l'Amérique latine à des degrés plus avancés parmi ces pays caribes. Le premier ministre Pierre, qui a été retourné à cette petite, le 20 septembre 2021, en absence de la ministre de la responsabilité pour la politique, nous avons donc un esclair et une question du premier ministre. Division qui va se faire pour adresser les problèmes de vols animaux et de la le ministère de l'Agriculture, ça qui connaît qu'on peut dire la semaine, il y a suivi cet étonnement, plus bon est l'année ça là qui a aidé à adresser les grands cas de vols animaux et de tout au long de l'année. Il y a aussi un chemin pour recevoir l'autre assistance pour le ministre de l'Agriculture. Le chef de division, ça va, Pandukas Albert, dit que c'est étonnement, il y a déjà aussi qu'il a placé la division à la même position pour conduire le travail plus effectif. Venez, Bagaïko, Rights, Moon Law, Wetéo, préparation, case file, by evidence, manière pour l'université, un rapport, vous comprenez, avec toute l'autre bagaille comme ça. 
in fact bagay police in mem manière pour handle exhibit là où oui pour faire bagay manière pour handle et là où il présente l'audience là si c'est bagay dit bagay qui pour oui ça on est pour faire vous comprenez en ligne ça là le département supposé ministre là supposé département agricole supposé gain des réfrigérateurs ban nous ça te rend les chemin sur n'importe les nous qui je viens ça nous avons mis un nord du pays et un sud du pays. Parce que si nous avons eu un week-end, nous passons à Genevan, on ne passe pas à côté pour nous, pour nous freeze en bas. Nous avons juste mis un grand réfrigérateur. Monsieur Albert, qui a sur les femmes pour 15 ans ouvert tout ce qu'il a fait, il a fait pour faire un effort pour décourager ces vols. Parce que la majorité des vols qui a fait, les cultivateurs, les habitations, et aussi le finissement de semaine, parce que ce n'est pas souvent qu'il y a une femme qui a subi à ce pays, il est semblé. Les gens ne sont pas les gens qui ont subi. Les gens ne sont pas les gens qui ont subi. Là, ils ne sont pas les gens qui ont subi. Ou mettez les lights là. Mettez les lights, mettez les chiens. Vous comprenez? Pas parler si vous pouvez caillou. Ou quand il y a un chien qui a jappé. Ou ça ni um, vidéo caméra. Ou ça ni caméra. Là, ni wireless caméra. Ou sa mette yi la, yo bagay sa vi la. Le yo pwen bagay yo, de yon bon maton, joska, même le yon vini ou check kamra ou, ou ka wè koumoun ti pwen. Tout sa, gade an le net la, se bagay sa pa che. So le moun koumoun se ka fè se bagay sa, ou ka isi pou yo, pou yon polis bok a yo, ek yo, mi ou, sa ba ou? Mi ou an le kamra, ka pwen bagay se moun nan. Oui, so moun ka enkouraje moun, pou ale wout sa la. Oui, ek moun ka enkouraje moun, la ou hen informasyon, concerné moun ti ka vole zan ni moun moun ti ka um, vole manje moun pase bay polis si département nou fermé de pou fè rapòt an station nan yo ka kontak nou paske nou ka travay lendi pou vendredi 8h pou 4h men nou ka la n'importe lè paske lè tout an swè si nou ka ache pou an moun nou pa jwenn ni nou ka opere menm ko polis ek sa sete a uh, mistye Patrick Albert, qui est responsable pour la division qui est responsable pour les vols animaux, et oui, à la ministre de la Justice, de la Justice. C'est comme ça, on peut avoir là, quand même, c'est autant pour garder, et que mon cas, bon, vite, parce que je vais vous faire une bonne nouvelle. Vous voyez, on est comme un cadeau, il y a un bon finissement. C'est même un point, bonne proposition contre la maladie de Corona, pour que le monde ait perdu la vie. Nous, on dit, un jeune officier police là qui était euh en cette ma idée nous ni pour faire quelle proposition donc nous a une tienne c'est pas de la division police sur attaque c'est pour ça nous votre programme là ça c'est pour ça comme d'eau ça c'est pour ça tout merci à bill primus we now take a look at the weather Saharan dust will continue to cause a reduction in shower activity, air quality, and visibility over the Lesser Antilles during the next forecast period. Persons with respiratory ailments and dust allergies are advised to take the necessary precautions. A tropical wave located over the central tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 20 miles per hour or 31 kilometers per hour. This system has a high chance of tropical cyclone formation during the next five days. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am General Norville.